Hello everybody! Welcome to Daytona! Now we have just finished up the Daytona Supercross for 2020 and we have may just have witnessed the race that we all needed here. Yes, finally! After how many years have Eli and Ken been in the 450 class? Since like five, I, I've been waiting for this battle for five years. I know they've been in the class six years, but it really, they really didn't start to battle until 2015. Remember that race in Phoenix? That's when they started the battle a lot. But we finally got a mono e mono Ken Rocks and Eli Tomac battle. And. Uh, you've seen the result if you've seen the race. If you haven't seen the race, I'm here to break it all down to you. Spoilers in the video, so if you have not seen it and you don't want it spoiled, please click away. So, let me explain this. Let me touch on the 250s real quick because I did make a little reaction video to that ending of that 250 race. Because Garrett Marchbanks got his first career win at 18 years old at Daytona. He's the last, first rider to do it since Marvin Muskan did it in 2013. I honestly didn't even know that that was Muskan's first win. First career win on the 250s was at Daytona 2013. I know, I know he did win Daytona 2013, but I didn't know it was his first career win on the 250. That's really cool. Got kind of sketchy there towards the end um, with Sexton closing up, but March Banks held his composure and he won. So that was great. So oh boy, um, that's about it on the 250 class. Uh, March Banks, really, really good time. So really good race. Didn't really have any sketchy moments out there. Go check out my reaction video. It was very cringy probably the last time I'm gonna show my face on a video unless something else crazy happens in the sport I'll make a reaction video when I sense it coming so let me talk about the 450s because that's kind of where the action was so for fantasy I had Tomac in first because it's Eli Tomac's house Daytona and Eli Tomac is the best rider of Daytona in our current generation of Supercross 450 riders. And he did not disappoint. I literally thought my fantasy was screwed at the first part of the race when he started like six and was not moving up at all. And he couldn't get about Webb and Anderson there for a long time. And meanwhile, Roxon was out front gapping those guys. So I literally did think that my fantasy was screwed and nothing good was gonna come out of it. But boy, did Eli do Eli things. Not crashes and screw ups. He went beast mode here tonight. That's the first time I've seen him ride like that since A2 when he tracked down Kenny and won. I mean, this is just who Eli Tomac's supposed to be this year. This is who I'm expecting from that number three. Um, he rode really well tonight. Tomac and Roxon are very hard to beat in 2020. And you remember in 2015 when at Arizona, this is when they were in Chase Field, not the football stadium that they're at now, State Farm Stadium or whatever it's called. Um, remember when they were there at Chase Field and the last time they were at Chase Field actually, Tomac and Roxon had that gnarly battle and Tomac ended up beating him. It's kind of the same here. But the thing I'm most impressed with from Eli is how fast he closed up on Ken Roxon. I cannot believe he closed up that fast. Um, so he got around Webb and Anderson pretty quickly there. And then he just set his sights after Roxon and I swear, like within three laps, or not even three laps, like within two laps. He was right on the back of him and ready to pounce and Roxon made some mistakes and I I know the race literally just happened I really don't remember how Eli got around him I, I literally do not that's how fast he was going um it was a good race though really good race this 
I, I think it's gonna be, I still don't trust Eli Tomac at all. I still don't. I really don't trust Eli Tomac. Um, he's just too risky right now to trust. I don't trust him, guys. I really don't. Um, there were some sketchy moments out there with Rox and Tomac's battle. Rox and kind of tipped over in a corner. Tomac kind of got hang up, hung up with him. And I literally thought at that moment Webb was going to catch him, fly right by, and win. I, I, Webb rode real, real good in the heat race and, ever, and everything, but man, it's like these heat racers are so boring. And they're like, well, here comes the snooze fest for the main event. And they come into the main event, and it's not. It's just awesome. It's two weeks in a row that that's happened, guys. This is this is becoming a trend. If we have boring heat races, expect the fun to come from the main events, and it did. And so bummed for Roxon though. He came in saying he wanted to win Daytona and all that, and he was out front. He had about a six-second lead at one point. He got straight up caught pass by Eli. So, and honestly, if Eli didn't have his troubles last week, if Eli didn't have his troubles last week, I literally think e easily Eli could have caught Roxon and Eli could have passed Roxon easily, no questions about it. So, I think, I still don't trust him though. I think the 12th place stupid race is coming, guys. I still think so. I'm also trying to make these a little shorter. Quick little recaps, guys. That's all I'm doing here. <laughs> um, so, and I do want to talk about the track a little bit before we go. This will be my last point before we sign off here. Um, this is um, last point before we sign off here about the track. That is, Carmichael did a really good job of designing this track here this year, guys. That was the best track I've seen all year, so that was great to see. I like the split lane. I like the sand section. I like the, the tabletops into the sand. I like that little tunnel jump that they brought back from the 80s or whatever. whatever. I liked all of it, so... That's a great track. Keep going in that direction. I know Lucas Oil. The, I know the rest of the stadiums are not as big as the stadiums that they're about to go to as Daytona, but you know they could still make good tracks. They proved that in 2009. Um. So yeah, that's prime. I'm pretty much gonna wrap it up here for our little recap video. Thank you all so much for watching. Did I miss anyone? No. Uh, my fantasy, my fantasy did pretty good. I had Roxon second and Tomac. I had them top two, so I did get that right. So I will get a lot of points for fantasy. I'll start letting you know my my fantasy scores at the end of the week. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you later.